In the past three years, I've read over 20 self-help books. And today, in this video, I'll share with you guys one lesson I've learned from six of my favorite self-help books. And I'll try to keep it under seven minutes. So, let's get to it. The first one comes from my favorite book, which is Green Lies by Matthew McConaughey. And that is the importance of journaling. Ever since I read the book, I started journaling and I've noticed that like history, feelings and emotions repeat themselves and you experience them in similar ways. So by recording how you feel at a particular point in time and how you felt afterwards, you have a documentation of that feeling. And if you ever feel that feeling or emotion again, Oh shit, here we go again. You know more or less how long it takes to get over that emotion and some steps you took to get over that feeling or emotion. I also like to do it in the way he did it, which is to mark every entry at the end with a green light, yellow light, or red light. Green light meaning that everything's going well, yellow light that it's going eh, and red light meaning that you've had something really, really, really bad happen. And I like to visualize it this way because no red light lasts forever, and every red light is eventually gonna turn into a green light. Second one comes from Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. And the advice is to compare yourself to who you were yesterday rather than comparing yourself with who someone else is today. Now, to me, that was very powerful because I tend to stress a lot about where I am today and feeling that I have to work harder because there's people out there making it at 20, 21, 22, and I'm already 24, about to be 25. And it's inevitable to compare yourself to others and see what others are doing and feeling like you're not doing enough. But at the end of the day, the competition should be with yourself. And you just have to accept that timing is different for everyone. And as long as you keep improving, you'll end up being a successful person. Next one comes from Rizad Poor Dad. And the advice is that you have to make sure that you buy assets, not liabilities. And it sounds pretty simple, but I had never thought about it this way. The first thing that people say always is that you should buy a house. But he argues that when you buy a house, you're buying a liability because it's something that's taking money away from you every month. And his advice is to buy assets, for example, a rental property that gives you cash flow every single month. And the trick is to buy liabilities such as a car, a house, something that you want with the passive income that your assets are generating. So if you want to buy a house for you to live in, make sure you have enough rental properties or enough investments that give you passive income for you to afford those liabilities. And that way you'll reach financial freedom. Obviously easier said than done, but I think it's definitely going to be the way that I handle most of my purchases in the future. The fourth one is from the subtle art of not giving an F. And that's the fact that you're not special. He talks about social media entitlement and how people nowadays have social media accounts and a lot of them feel like that gives them a voice. And in order to get likes, that voice tends to be very, very extreme. And by getting likes and getting retweets, they gain this feeling of importance. And it made me think that truly the only way to become special is to just work hard, work in the background, and likes, retweets, subscribers are not really gonna mean anything. What really matters is that you work hard, you're a good person, and to use the title of the book, who gives an F if people think that you're special or not. Next up, we have a personal finance book, and that's a little book of common sense investing. The advice for this one is to invest in a low cost index fund that tracks the entire stock market, but I'm gonna change it to the S&P 500. An example of this would be SPY, SPY. And he actually gives this strategy in the very first page of the book. He says that the winning strategy for investing in stocks is to own all the nation's publicly held businesses at a very low cost through low cost index funds. So if you're thinking of starting investing and you don't know where to start, or even if you already invest and you're picking stocks, and you're not seeing much success, it's a very, very basic tip. We have no idea how many people miss out on this seven to 10% return annually because they try to guess what stocks to pick because they don't believe in the stock market or they invest in high cost funds that at the end end up losing to the S&P 500. So go buy that SPY. And the last one comes from How to Win Friends and Influence People, one of my favorite books of all time. This book has almost 30 pieces of advice, so it was very hard to pick. But I think my favorite one is the fact that you can't win an argument. 
and I've used this so much in my personal life because I used to be a person that always wanted to be right and always wanted to prove to the other person that I was right in an argument. The only thing you win there is ego and that the other person is going to resent you. No one in this world is going to thank you for proving them wrong. So if you're at a dinner and you're having a discussion or a conversation and the person swears that he's right and you know for a fact 100% that he's wrong, just let it go. Let him take the win. He'll like you for it probably. And you have the win of knowing that you were right all along and he'll find out eventually. So that's all. Six tips from six different self-help books. Probably my favorite ones. I probably left one or two out there, but I hope you like them. If you want me to go deeper into any of these books, comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next Wednesday. Peace.